Welcome to the Alexa Pro. Are you ready to dive into a fascinating world of Alexa? In this video, we are delving into a comprehensive course from basic to advanced, unveiling the secrets of Alexa, mix and powerful pattern matchings without telling you about OTP and advanced techniques. If you are eager to master this amazing functional language and elevate your skill, this video is a tailor-made for you. Don't miss the chance to enhance your Elixir expertise. Turn in now and let's start this learning journey together. Ready to boost your Elixir game? Let's get started! Welcome to ELX Pro and in this course you're gonna learn a lot of techniques related to uh, real world using Elixir and today you're gonna learn about pattern matching you're gonna learn about uh, basic syntax with Elixir and especially you're gonna learn what is Elixir uh, what is behind the Elixir which is the Erlang and how it's so powerful so let's go ahead and creating a project. If you don't know how to install Elixir on your local machine, if you don't know how to set up your VS Code, I'm going to provide you an article on the, this YouTube video description and make your life easier to follow uh, this uh, class. But if you have any question, uh, leave us some comments and then I can help you too. So first of all, we are going to create a project using Elixir. And to start creating projects using Elixir, we're going to use the mix. What is mix uh, when we talk about Elixir? Mix is a way to uh, invoke tasks, create projects, and manage dependencies. So in this case, to create a project, uh, we can just say something like new the project will be we'll call bank I highly recommend you to uh, uh, create a repository to follow some in this tutorial specifically and now when we go to our bank project So we have a couple of files and at the beginning, let's just start uh, run our project. If you see this command that we are providing to our application means that we're going to run the directory and we are going to understand it. it's a project and compile those files. Uh, at the beginning, if you say bank.tab, as you can see, we have the mix project and we have a function called hello, which means that hello world. Uh, this file that it's provided, we have right here. And then we have the documentation. And if you say something like help, this is super uh, useful for documentations. And hello, as you can see, have a documentation how to use this function plus when we have elixir so as you can see we have a mixed project we have some configurations and as you can see we have this dependency don't worry about the alias and use that we have here because you're gonna learn it too but if you use the mix in project you're gonna it's going to describe for us how to create a project as you can see you have the app and the version which is so powerful and because we have this configuration it's gonna be more straightforward to uh, follow some uh, patterns uh, we have the elixir version and then we have how to start the project and the environment and the most important here is the dependency which is a list of dependencies that we are using on this project which is fantastic and then when you have it you're gonna see a couple more details but the most important is we have this function you're gonna learn more about how function works and then you can see that we have more things related to dependencies 
And before we start coding, I would like to share a couple more things with you. You saw that uh, we have this module. You're going to learn more about it. And I'm just going to explain to you what is behind Elixir. At the end of the day, you have right here, uh, it's, we are talking about the environment, uh, the lib folder, and then we have our project. Another thing, if you run mix test, which is a text, a task to run uh, the tasks that we have. Now, as you can see, we have different environments. One is the develop, the, the dev environment, and the another one is the test. Let's just keep focus on dev. So we have the mix, which is what we compile about a couple of dependencies related to Elixir. They consolidated. And the most important is this guy here. Uh, what it's saying is that when you have your mix running behind is Elixir, and it is saying that we have a module called bank. The module called bank is related to this module here, elixir.bank. And then we have a BIM file. And when you open, the most important is that we have the bank module which is this name here and we have a function called hello and if you search here which is super weird as you can see we have something related to it, hello and then we have the result related to uh, the function too so don't worry because you don't need to learn it just explain to you what we have behind elixir and let's just uh you learn about this module here and let's just remove everything here because we're not gonna learn about the documentation but and if you do it and then execute the project again it was recompiled we got the same module and if we try to to open here and search for a hello we don't have the word anymore because we have a new BIM code. And if we create another module, we are going to create the module called, called user.ex, which is the Elixir syntax. And then create the module. And then if we recompile the code, as you can see now, let me just refresh this page. We have the another BIM file, and if you take a look here, we have those modules. And what's going to happen is that we're going to have the module files and what is behind the module too. So this is the final result that we're going to have. And if we run the test now, as you can see, it's failing because the functional is undefined and private in the test will be on this folder here so we have our test helper and then we have our test file and we can just leave this and then run that again and there you go now we have an empty file and just one more thing related to uh this class that we are gonna learn is that now because we have those files now because we have a test we need to learn how to install dependencies because you're going to use this a lot on your projects. So I'm going to provide this link to you. Uh, we're going to install the mixed test watch, which is a tool to use test driven development in Elixir. And when you install, just pay attention because you're going to see another uh, folder here. Then you can run the command mixdevs.get now as you can see we installed the test watch but the test watch if you see the mix file it needs to use the file system which is another dependency it's great but now let's start talking about coding so i showed to you the files i showed to you the tests how it works how the files is generated i showed you the mix help to 
let's go to our first step and our first step what we're going to do is let's create a function to create users now we can come over here and run the command mix then it compile the dependencies to and to create a function if it's a public function it's that if it is a private function it's gonna be def p and now we can say uh new i'm gonna say uh name and email and then let's just return like a map as you can see this is our result only a map so now to recompile our code this is what we can do and then what we're gonna do we recompile our code and now let's start using it so we can just say user dot nil yes and the email as you can see i'm not using um uh, parentheses here I'm just using double quotes because the result is the same. Then we're gonna say the email is gonna be elxpro.com. And this is the result. We have a map here. Why I started with a map? So as I mentioned to you, this is a real world course where you're gonna learn Elixir. So if you wanna learn more about Elixir, you have the Elixir School. But most topics here will be covered because my main goal here is not just replicating tutorial, but sharing my experience because I've been working with Elixir for six years and help you to move faster with Elixir. Another thing which is fantastic with Elixir is because we can just uh, using task driven development easily. I'm just sharing with you a couple more details because now we're going to be talking about the difference between map and struct. Right here, we have a map, and then we can use the pipe operators. For example, we could say something like user new right here. But in this case, we are going to use uh, the parentheses because our next step, we are going to use the map dot but and then i'm gonna say age and then i'm gonna say 31 sorry map that but age using the atom 31 and there you go it is working but how about because we're talking about the struct how about if we have a struct where we have the name Neil and we have the email Neil. When we do it and we compile, sorry, um, oh, I forgot to use the struct that we are creating, which is the user. So if you recompile and then call again so as you can see we have this struct here so if we say something about a variable here user dot then you have this struct and the informations of our struct which is fantastic and now if you just try to use the map dot put at the annual valley as you can see it will convert our struct to a map which is not great because we are using a map, not a struct, not a map. So in this case, focus on having um, the struct very well defined. In this case, it's going to be a problem. And now, because we have the struct on the same module, we can just replace to module right here. Now, if you recompile and then just try again, the result will be the same, which is fine for now. And now, what we're going to do as our third step, we are going to start thinking about um, the accounts. So we're going to create another module called 
account dot ex and then we have the account what's going to be the struct will be the users and that's it for now and then because we have the struct right here we're going to start creating them but first of all we're going to learn a little bit more about the user stuffs so what we can do here you can search about how to use sergios and one of them is going to be like this one which is a sergio and this sergio we're going to say name and email and then we're going to say a which means that it's going to be an atom. Mm, never mind. I, it's been a while that I'm not using this way. Let's just leave as it is. Uh, recompile. And that's it. Now we got our accounts. And by default, I'm going to have a function called insert. And this insert functions, we're gonna have the uh, users. Then we're gonna send the uh, name and email. And then what we're gonna do is that we are going to say user new and then add the user. So if we compile, and then if we call the function account insert the list will be empty the name will be will be gus and this is going to be the email as you can see we have the user because we are using a functional programming language what we're going to do we're going to have like this is going to be our list then we're gonna say account dot insert then we're gonna say gus and then the email once again and we're gonna have the result and then if we try again using pipe operator which is fantastic uh, i'm gonna say bruno lxpro.com and as you can see now we got two users right here which is great but one of the things that we need to be aware is that when we are creating the user we are going to set the balance C and the default will be $1,000 which is fantastic now if we recompile the code base and then try that again this is the new struct that we have which is great now we need to think about a couple more functions and what we're going to do we're going to do as a next step we're going to start using more techniques related to tdd and then we are going to start uh, creating a couple more functions i hope you enjoyed this class Plus, if you want to learn more about Elixir in an advanced topic such as Live View, Phoenix Framework, I highly recommend you to uh, check a free class that I prepared for you to learn more about Elixir with using my Elixir course. See you in the next class and bye bye.